first want to point out that softboxes aren't terrible. That's not what I'm trying to say at all. I do, however, want to debunk this assumption that a softbox is this must-have piece of gear in order to get the softest type of light for your food photography, or any photography in general. Plus, if you're shooting in a relatively small space, it can be difficult to have a softbox open comfortably. Or perhaps it's a hassle to even just open up and tear down every time, and it'll be helpful to have a more efficient solution. Either way, I want to show you a neat little technique, very simple, but I think it is a lost art, on how you can still achieve that soft, natural-looking light without having to use a softbox. I took a few shots of these cookies with window light first so we can compare it to bounce light and see later how they match up. All right, first let's talk about what actually makes soft light. Soft light operates mainly under one principle and that is the apparent size of your light source. The key word here is apparent. Your light source must be large in relation to your subject if you want that light to be soft. There's nothing negotiable about that. For any subject, to maximize the softness of the light, you need to open up that light source as much as you can, and that is where I think softboxes can fail you because they're simply limited to the size that you're given. So a better solution I wanna suggest is, wait for it, bounce light. I know, sounds simple, but I really think this technique is severely underestimated. It's simply just using an external surface and firing your flash into that surface, which then redirects that light back onto your subject. And just by bouncing that light, you immediately make that surface its own light source because that light spread from the flash is reflecting off of that wall and also has increased in size, which can now, according to our principle, make your light softer. All right, now let's actually see how this really works. Now let's rearrange this setup for flash. Okay, so this is what I wanna point out. Notice how just by pointing my flash into the curtains, or the reflector in this case, I created for myself a new light source, essentially. And I'm shooting into the same spot that the natural daylight usually comes in, so even more so, I'm basically recreating daylight because I'm illuminating that part of the window. Now, at this point, it's just a matter of preference. The beauty with Bounce Flash is that we can adjust a lot to cater to our tastes. For me, I really do love how the light still has a direction. It's this combination of soft and harsh light, so this is fine with me. But let's say these shadows are a no-no for you and you want that light even softer. You want that really bright and airy natural look. You'd want as minimal shadows as possible. Well, to create even softer light means opening up the light source even more. And one neat way we can do that is by placing diffusion material in between that bounce light and the subject. Notice how the shadows now are really soft. They look pretty much non-existent, right? It even gave these cookies a different feel, don't you think? They seem more cozy and relaxing compared to my previous shots where the texture was more emphasized and had more of a punch to them. 
And by the way, if this lighting setup looks familiar, at least this concept, then you're probably familiar with a concept called book lighting, which in essence is bounce light plus diffusion. And this setup has been around for decades, I believe, and has been used in the film industry most commonly. And it's just well known for how well it can soften artificial light sources. So again, one of the advantages of bounce light is we can create different levels of quality in terms of the light. In fact, even without the diffuser, there are other ways to soften up the light. For one, we can increase the distance of the flash from the wall, thus creating more light spread on the wall. Another thing we can do is change up where the flash is pointing on the wall with respect to the subject. I can point it upwards, creating more top-down lighting. And I can also point it down, creating light that sort of cuts across the table more and creating more shadows and streaks. We can also consider the zoom function of the flash. So right now, I've been shooting at a wide focal length at 24 millimeters, which creates a wide beam angle. But let's say if I wanted a more narrow beam angle for harder light, I can zoom in my flash to a higher focal length, thus creating a more narrow beam angle. In either of these cases, the main point to take away is that bounce light can be very powerful in terms of its flexibility of options. It doesn't require a lot of gear to carry around. It gives you great results. And at least for me, you learn more about how light behaves. At the end of the day, you don't have to rely on specific pieces of gear to get the results that you want. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, and remember to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. Also, remember to sign up for my email list, and there's a link to my website in the description below to sign up for updates on future courses and other content that I'm planning on releasing soon. Other than that, thanks for watching. I really, really do appreciate it, and I'll talk to you next time.